Let's do this. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to North Courts. This is an exciting episode. We have so much Canadian basketball action, so much Montreal basketball action. So that's what we're gonna focus on. But first, we're gonna talk about the things that caught our eye this last couple of weeks. Megan, let's start with you. All right, I gotta go to the, you know, the, the city of bright lights, New York City and the New York Knits, Madison Square Garden, RJ Barrett. And you know, I'm sorry to the Raptors fans, but, uh, the numbers he put up on Saturday afternoon against the Raptors in that huge Knicks win to continue their winning streak were absolutely phenomenal. You know, just the flow of the game, how defenses are playing. Um, you know. Canada, <laughs> yeah, you know it. Sing it. <laughs> 25 points, 12 rebounds, getting himself a double-double, uh, four assists. This was on 50% shooting from the floor and 43% from long range. And that was an area coming into the league and even, you know, last season that people said he needed to improve upon his three-point shooting. He's clearly starting to do that and knocking it down with consistency. But the biggest thing for me was that he was a plus 23 in that ball game, only second to Derrick Rose at a plus 26 coming off the bench. So he's not, not only efficient in the way he's putting the ball in the hoop, but he's also making sure that he's having an impact from start to finish of these ball games for the New York Knicks. Yeah, that three ball, it's great to see. I mean, that's what everyone was talking about. He's got it rolling now. Javon, what stuck out to you these last couple of weeks? You know what, just to add to that, some more Canadian content. I like the fact that O'Shea Brissett, you know, he signed a multi-year deal with Indiana just as much as, as Simi Shitu signed a 10-day, a two-way, sorry, with, um, with New York. I really like the opportunity for both of those guys because in O'Shea's case, Indiana's been longing for a big wing that can defend multiple positions. He, he fits in perfectly. You factor in that they have a number of injuries now, he's a guy that can play, you know, be a 3 and D guy on the wing. And then whether he's playing the 4 or 5 position, he's strong enough to defend the, the post and he's, you know, quick enough and athletic enough uh, to take guys off the dribble. And then you 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 know you're factoring the fact that he can he can he can shoot from three he can stretch the floor now uh, the relationship with Coach Nate Bjorken with the you know the time he spent with Toronto and the Raptors 905 you couple that all together this is the perfect situation for him so I'm excited to see his growth the fact that he's matured and identified what he needs to do to not only you know be on the court but you know earn himself an NBA contract and Simi's in a similar situation with New York you know a guy that left Vanderbilt early into the draft went undrafted. Um, and now it's really just starting to come into his own. So I'm, I'm excited just to see more Canadians in the NBA, uh, more guys making an impact and just the growth of these guys continuing. Yeah, I love the opportunity that O'Shea Brissett's getting. You think about as a starter now, four games he started, he's averaging 15 and nine. Obviously, he's got the opportunity with Miles Turner going down with the injury. So it's great to see him taking advantage of it. On my side, I'm going to shout out Kelly Olynyk. I think for him, what he's done with the Houston Rockets since being moved there, he's pretty much putting up 20 and 10, knocking down that three ball. It seemed like his numbers would go down once Christian Wood came back from his injury, but no, Kelly's just balling. And so it's great to see that all the Canadian ballers are kind of spread across the West Coast, East Coast. They're everywhere now. So uh, (laughs) it makes for a busy programming schedule. That's for sure. Let's move on to the highlight of the last two weeks, pretty much uh, the Montreal Bowl. We had Lugens Dort, Chris Boucher, Kem Birch all duking it out in a Raptors Thunder game. Megan, what stuck out to you in that game? I think the simple fact that the three of them put on for Montreal. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there, there wasn't one of them that didn't have some sort of impact on that ball game. And I think it was great to see, you know, we always talk about the talent coming out of the GTA and, and Toronto basketball, West Coast basketball as well too. Now we're starting to see the emergence of what Montreal can bring to, you know, the basketball landscape. And I think that that was really the biggest thing is you had three people from the Montreal area put on for the entire province of Quebec and the city of Montreal. And I think it was fantastic. And just, you know, seeing what, Boucher has been able to do in his time with the Raptors and being, you know, thrust into 
the spotlight and, and having this sort of pressure on him, the addition of Ken Birch to the Toronto Raptors as well, too, has been fantastic for him. And he's been able to continue to improve game to game for them. And then, it's, of course, you know, what Lou does with the Thunder, I think, is fantastic. So I'm just happy to see that they put on for their city on, on the biggest stage and the brightest lights when all eyes in Canada were on that one game. Javon, do we have a legit rivalry right now between Montreal Hoopers and Toronto Hoopers? See, V, what you're not going to do is have these people crucify me. I'm, I'm not picking. I'm not choosing. <laughs> what, I'll say, what I'll say is this. Uh, you know, there's a tremendous amount of talent coming from Toronto and, uh, you know, a, even greater talent coming from Montreal. And I think, you know, you have to, we have to take a step back and say, hey, you know, tip our hats to the coaches, the trainers, uh, and a lot of the former players that are now coming back with it, be, you know, guys on the West Coast, Montreal, Toronto, wherever it may be, and just sharing their knowledge, sharing their experience, because that has a domino effect on, you know, of the player, these young, the next generation, the younger guys. Um, on top of that, I really like what Chris Boucher, Chris Boucher said, uh, you know, after that OKC game. He said, look, I don't, I want, I've set the bar. Like, I want these kids, the next generation, to aspire to be more than me. So, you know, with that being said, that's the magic to this success is we have to take this baton and run with it now. And I think, you know, a lot of the former players that are going to re essentially retire later on and just being coming back home, sharing the knowledge, taking these younger guys under their wing is going to pay dividends. And we're seeing it already today. I'm surprised uh, you didn't mention that you were working with Chris Boucher or Lou Dort in the summer. I mean, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, a small part of that. I think I still got some juice. I just defend. <laughs> Speaking of those veteran players that are now passing on that knowledge, Javon, you had the chance to speak with Joel Anthony, two-time NBA champion. Let's take a look at how that conversation went. So first of all, Joel, thanks for taking the time out of your day to join us on North Course and just sit down with us and then talk for a bit. You know, it, it, was a, it was a big night for Montreal a couple nights ago in the NBA with uh, Lou Dort. Ken Birch and Chris Boucher sharing the court together. Um, what did that mean for Montreal? Being a guy, you know, you paved the way, helped pave the way with these guys. That definitely just gives us a you know great sense of pride. You know, it was a very very proud moment as a as a Montrealer. Um, you know, I'm sure that the entire city was uh, everyone. You know, basketball fans and even uh, outside of that were uh, were definitely trying to tune in. Um, just because you had that type of representation uh, from uh, from our city, you know, it's something we we don't get uh, as often, and so to be able to see that is it's it's just really you know a really special moment. And you know, it's it's funny you say that because you know, the, the basketball culture in Canada has grown so much. What is it, what is it like? You know, to just tell us about describe the basketball culture in Montreal. Some would say it's a, a hotbed now, but I, I'm sure you would disagree and say, hey, no, the talent has been here for. For some time now yeah definitely uh you know the talent uh there's there's been a lot of talented guys that have uh come out of the city um when you you know look back i know for for me growing up you had uh guys uh you know guys that have even been part of uh you know the national team program like trevor williams and wayne yearwood and you know, there, there's a lot of a lot of names uh peter walcott um you know the, the list kind of goes on mike smith um uh, in terms of talented guys that, you know, may, might not have had uh, a huge, uh, gotten huge recognition, but have, you know, definitely been able to, um, you know, pave, pave their own way and, um, you know, represent the city for people that know basketball. You know, you really have to, like, know and be, uh, you know, be part of it. And th those are guys that, you know, I, I saw as, you know, like, like my OGs growing up. And um, it's, uh, you know, the, the talent has, has really always, always been there, but the city has, you know, just hasn't gotten the recognition that we felt um, we've been, uh, we've been due. And so that's why it's great to see this now because uh, this, this, you know, it, it is a city that has um, a lot of talent. There, there is, you know, great potential with uh, the, the players coming up right now. And, you know, for, for that to finally come together is, uh, you know, is, is really special. And I see the, the national team jersey in the back. I see the Miami Heat jersey in the back. And I'm thinking about your path, you know, being cut. Some, some people may not know your story. Being cut from your high school team, going JUCO, um, going undrafted and just working your way up. It's a similar story of, you know, the Boucher's of the world, the Birch's of the world, uh, Lou Dort, in, in the sense that these guys all went undrafted and really yeah. carved out a niche for themselves. Do you think that's, a, you know, 
do they have a chip on their shoulder because of that and have something to prove? Is that a part of the, the DNA? Yeah, definitely. That, that's definitely part of our DNA, part of our culture. Um, you know, like, like I said, like we've always felt we were, uh, you know, we, we were overlooked in um, you know, a lot of situations. And uh, even those that, you know, have been able to have, you know, some, some, some more success, it still hasn't been um, an, easy, uh, an easy road. So uh, to be able to, that's why it's even more special to be able to see those guys have, you know, that type of success because like you understand uh, for a lot of them, their, uh, their story and uh, where they came from to, uh, to be able to do that. My brother, I appreciate you for doing this, man. Thanks again. Now it's time for our favorite segment, the starting five. This time we're focusing on all Quebec ballers, men and women. In my five, I've got Sylvia Sweeney, historic ranger, Joel Anthony. We just saw the interview with him. Nero Fields and repping some present day content. I had to get Chris Boucher in there. He's been doing way too many big things this season. Obviously, we're hoping he can heal up soon. Megan, who's in your five? So, Vivek, like you, I've got Fields and Anthony. Then I also added in uh, Lizanne Murphy, who's done some amazing things for the senior women's national team. I got to go with the OG in Bill Walton, or Bill Walton, excuse me, <laughs> Dwight Walton. I apologize. And of course, I had to go with the man that I grew up on when you look back at the, you know, 90s in the NBA and the guy, the man, the myth, the legend. That is Bill Weddington. There we go. There we go. Javon, what about you? I got to go with my triple OG, Wayne Yearwood. Um, you know, he's a, an Olympian one, an 88 Olympian. And he, he was also a dual sport athlete. He was also drafted in the CFL. Uh, he spent some time with us coaching with the national team. And he's one of those guys, if, another, if an opposing team looked at us in any other way, any sort of way, he would jump in and ready to throw some balls. And I'm always like, coach, you got to remember you're a coach now. Um, then I go, I'm going with Joel Anthony, two-time NBA champion, and just his grind, man. A guy that's gone undrafted, went through the G League process, and just worked his way up. Uh, so you have to respect that. Uh, Juan Mendez, the you know Canadian high scoring Canadian NCAA history. Um, you know from there we we'll go with Bill Wennington, who is you know a part of that those Chicago Bulls, three-time champion of the Chicago Bulls team. He just had to be the best screener he could ever be and just get out of the way. Um, you know Jordan and Pippen were taking care of the rest, but he was the best that he could be there. I, it's Sylvia Sweeney, man. I think, you know, she to me is the gold of all goats from this list because she did her impact on the court, went far beyond um, off the court as well, just being a part of the governing, you know, board that brought the Toronto Raptors to us. Um, so, you know, her impact was felt not just in women's basketball, but in men's and just the basketball culture here in Canada entirely. There you have it, folks. There are five that resonated with us let us know the five that resonated with you hit us up on twitter on youtube make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and tune in in a couple weeks because we're gonna have a very special guest for you